and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna make it red just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm gonna do now is enable the layer of the snowboarder. I'm gonna click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also gonna double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually gonna right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm gonna press Control J, Command J and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm gonna disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm gonna clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna press Control, Alt, G, Command, Option, G on the Mac. Then I'm gonna enable the layer right above that. And I'm just gonna make a selection around the snowboarder. So I'm gonna click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply gonna click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just gonna select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not gonna be part of the selection, I'm gonna hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. Around the snow border, I'm gonna select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm gonna do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm gonna click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated. So that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm gonna do now is press Control T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you wanna click and drag on, you can press Control Zero, that's Command Zero on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Then I'm gonna click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm gonna zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go ahead and use this shovel with the snow. So let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of the shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool. I'm gonna make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace, or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel i'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill with white on the areas that I wanna keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just gonna click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I wanna keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt and backspace option, backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto a self using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the 
screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with, oh, it's coming off the board. And actually, let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board. So maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down. So maybe something like that. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Every so often I do a search for that hashtag and if I find your image, I'll leave a comment. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoy the tutorial, don't forget PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Instagram at JR from PTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the 3D pop-out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're going to start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up, and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna make it red, just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm gonna do now is enable the layer of the snow border. I'm gonna click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel, and I'm also gonna double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100% and actually now that I'm looking at it at 100% I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected I'm going to press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. Okay, now that I have the selection active around the snow border, I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and 
it can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Then I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. The first thing I got to do is get rid of this shovel. I'm going to click on the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. That's okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt and Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image, adjustment, levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark value to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool. Select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard and I'm just gonna paint with black and again you don't have to be very accurate as long as you get close enough it should be good and I'm just painting these pixels away which represent floor and once again I'm gonna go into image adjustment levels and darken up so command on the Mac Click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the layers panel. On the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon. And notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the move tool, Click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab and then coming down and releasing and there's our file. It's a really big layer so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back to transform. We can't see the corner handles so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 in the back. There's the corner handles and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constraint. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose flip horizontal 
and from here I can match the scene a little bit better and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this and press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape the snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the libraries panel and I'm going to open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would.